Hey everyone, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and I'll be showing you one of the interesting games that I played off late on chess.com uh, and it had a brilliant move as per the computer analysis. Now, you generally don't see uh, brilliant moves uh, as per the analysis. The reason is simple. Uh, computer defines it as a best move or an excellent move because it has calculated all the computations, all the permutation and combinations that could have happened in the game from there on. Uh, but brilliant move is the one which is a very tricky one to be find. Uh, and it has uh, the, the follow up of the, that move has a lot of consequences in the game and gives you some serious advantage. Now, this is my second brilliant move. Uh, the first one I'm placing the link in the description below, as well as on the top of the video. You can click that and check it out. Uh, that was also an interesting one. That's my first ever brilliant move. And this is the second one. Uh, before we start off with the game, I would request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon as well so that you don't miss out on the videos that I'm posting daily. Uh, it's my commitment that I won't miss out on any of the days uh, till the channel is live. I will post a video daily. Uh, and I'll try to be instructive, as instructive as possible throughout the games. Uh, I'll make sure that uh, even I'm improving throughout my journey. And anyone who visits the channel, watches these videos, takes out something from the game, improves his game further because I'm, I'm a true chess lover, just like you all. All right, uh, so yeah, let's start off with the game. I played d4 here, uh, trying to play the London system. It generally starts off with d4, then bishop to uh, f4, and then pawn to e3. Then you can probably uh, develop your knight. Uh, the ideas are pretty simple in the London system. You will create a pyramid in the center. Uh, that's pretty solid uh, for anyone to break through. You can develop your knight later on, connect both the knights uh, after the bishop is also developed, of course. Uh, so that's how the London system works. Uh, it's a very dynamic opening, uh, yet solid. You can, of course, open up the edge files later on uh, with the attack uh, and then win it from there. So yeah, let's continue with the game. Uh, he plays, uh, the opponent plays now here uh, g6. The idea is to play the king's Indian, I believe. Uh, the bishop comes to g7, the knight to f6, and then he castles and then goes for the center. Uh, so both the players are implementing the setups initially. So I bring bishop to f4. He gets bishop to g7. I play e3 now. Remember, uh, you have to take out the bishop first before closing the diagonal of the bishop by e3. So that's why the dark square bishop comes first. Now here, here he played uh, f6. That's a weird move in the beginning to be played because uh, A, you are weakening up your king side. Uh, B, uh, your knight now has to probably go to the h6, which is not a usual square for the knight. Or the knight would come on uh, the e7. But for that also, you have to push the pawn forward and then probably develop the knight. So yeah, that, that's weakening of the uh, f, uh, f7. So... I didn't like that move much uh, for him. Uh, so I continued with my development, not trying to capitalize on his mistake uh, that early, but rather going with the development. So knight to g3. Now he played uh, d6 now. So he has opened up his king side, but not developing it completely. Now he's pushing the uh, center pawn. So now it's probably he would push the center pawn to e5 uh, so that he gets to some... Uh, have some exchange in the center and then probably get his bishop active. His queen can be probably exchanged with the queens. Uh, so some idea should have been there like this. Uh, so I continue with my development, strengthening my center, not making sure that I'm doing anything fancy, but sticking to the principles of the London system. Uh, and here he played bishop to e6. Now that's again strange. You are restricting your pawn movement. But probably if you're playing bishop to e6, your idea is to get back the bishop on f7. Maybe that's why you played uh, f6 initially. So I was trying to understand what he's, he's trying to do. Uh, but sim simultaneously, I was trying to make sure that my development is not hindered by anything. So I saw some opportunity to take control of the center because the pawn hasn't challenged for the center. So I played um, move uh, e4 here. And he plays uh, c6 now, again, uh, a move which is very passive, I would say. Uh, he could have developed his knight maybe uh, on d7 or to c6, but he chose to move pawn to c6, blocking the diagonal of the king, so then I can't give a check with the bishop or the queen. Uh, so that's what his idea was. 
Here I developed the other knight to d2. The, both the knights are now connected. Now the bishop is the only minor piece remaining to be developed. And opposing, uh, and if you see my opponent, he has yet to be developed his both the knights, uh, which are pretty much uh, on their original place as of now. The the bishop on uh, g7 is a defender basically, but again not very active. Uh, same for the light square bishop, not doing much in the center. In fact, blocking the pawn uh, on e7. So development wise, if you see white is way ahead, so that's why the game is in favor of white here, 1.10. Now he plays uh, a6. Now again, a, a weird move, I would say. Uh, you don't have to play passively uh, in the beginning, but develop your minor pieces. If you don't have your minor pieces out, you will not be able to attack or defend. So development should be the main focus of the first 10 moves of a game, uh, which he didn't do. Uh, here I went on with the bishop uh, to c4. The idea being, if you capture, I'm removing the defender uh, of a king side, which was going to be bishop on f7 because your bishop is here so uh, i assume that the bishop came for defending the king side so here he uh, got the pawn move uh, move to d5 uh, the idea is to kick the bishop away uh, of course i can try and go for some exchange in the center uh, but that doesn't result into much uh, again i have to move the bishop eventually to save the bishop so uh, i lose some momentum i lose the center pawn as well so i thought I would not go for this line, but rather move my bishop backwards straight away to b3. Uh, and then uh, I was waiting for him to uh, basically do something about the situation. So he got his bishop back now on the f7 as expected. So now, now I took on the pawn, uh, making sure that uh, the center is open. Uh, his king is in the center. Uh, and as long as the opponent's king is in the center, it's always good for you to attack. Of course, you should attack once your king is in the safety, uh, if I would have castled. But my idea was to cast on the queen side, not the king side. So I wanted to move the queen then and then cast on the queen side, align my rooks on the D and E file and attack in the center. He takes on the pawn. Uh, of course, he has to. And now I get my queen to uh, E2, a good move. Uh, for the a good square for the queen making it active as well as eyeing the king on the center uh, of course now the plan is to castle and get the rooks active here he plays knight to h6 preparing to castle because he understands the threat and that the e file is opened so i still uh, continue with my plan of castling uh, making sure the king is pretty much uh, in a good space safe and secure before i go for the attack complete. Uh, if you see, uh, the dark square bishop is behind the pawn chain, so it won't be able to do anything, uh, but just defend the king side. Uh, my bishop is active, I'm the king side already. Knights are connected, so everything is solid. Of course, this bishop can come back now on c2 and i, the diagonal towards the king. So that's another plan of the bishop, always eyeing the king side. Uh, and now further, I can just push on my pawns and just go for the attack. Uh, that's the whole plan. He castles to safety and I start moving my pawns. Uh, the pawn army is now coming. You have to defend something and do something about it. Uh, he plays uh, um, e e6 here. He could have developed his knight. Still, his development is incomplete. Though his king side looks pretty solid, at least from outside. But that's where I try to just create some weaknesses by capturing the knight, removing one of the defenders of the king. He takes with the bishop. Of course, he has to take back. Uh, he can't lose a piece. Uh, of course, that also makes sure that there's a pin on my uh, king uh, on my knight now because the king is on c1. Um, I can move the king, but um, it was not required uh, as immediately in the game. So I thought of just opening up the g and h files. Uh, I'm okay even if I lose some pawns here. Uh, of course, this can create some weaknesses if he plays the suppose he tries to. Uh, give me pawn exchange on the f file. I can just simply hop hop in with the knight on e5, which is a very controlling square in the London system. You are threatening to take on the bishop, which is again a defender of the king side. Uh, and once the g file or the h file gets opened up, the other rook is also coming up, and both the rooks are pretty solid attacking the king side. So a good attack build up. And now he plays knight to c6. Uh, too late for development, I would believe, because the attack has already begun. 
Uh, now here, computer testing play the move uh, H5 rather than G5. Uh, computer saying H5 so that if he captures, of course, I can take back. Uh, but then again, uh, the G file gets opened up, but H will never get opened up in the game. And of course, he has he can just move the king away, and he would be safe in the game probably, uh, because then the rook comes back, comes to the G file, controls the G file. So that is uh, one way which computer is suggesting to be played. Of course, uh, white is an advantage because the king uh, is just in the corner, uh, not doing anything. Uh, the G file always will threaten him something or the other so yeah that's one line that could have been played but here i chose to play g5 uh, forcing him to take uh, with either the bishop or the pawn of course he can't take with the bishop uh, so he just pushes his bishop back that was also a good move because now if i take he can take back with the queen and things look pretty good for him uh, the attack is fended in a nice way and he gains some uh, momentum back in the game he was one point odd losing and now he's just 0.26 behind. So that was uh, what his plan was after moving the bishop back. But I pushed on the h1 further, forcing him to take one of the pawns at least. And he takes on the g5. Uh, if he would have taken and played the best move, which was to take on uh, the h5, then of course we can get the other rook on the g file, uh, again creating some pressure and then we can probably take on the pawn. Uh, make, making sure the G file is also opened up. So here, computer is suggesting uh, rook to e8 for uh, the dark side. If he plays the best move as well, uh, we can capture uh, G takes on f6. Uh, the bishop cannot capture back. If the queen, the queen can capture back. Um, that is the best move for him at this point of time. And if you see, uh, this bishop is pretty much uh, just defending the uh, king here. Uh, the files are opened up, so that can be a good attack as well. Uh, white is still an advantage uh, after the initial development. And now bishop is always going to come to c2. Queen can be lined up uh, as well as on d3. And then both the pieces are eyeing uh, the h7 uh, along with the rook maybe once this pawn is also removed. Then the rook is also attacking on the h7. So the attack is on. That's how you build on to the attack, making sure that things are... Uh, pretty much lined up. Everything goes for the attack, not just with a couple of pieces. So he took on the g-pawn instead, uh, and I take back uh, the g6 with my h5, which he takes back with the bishop now. Of course, uh, even if he doesn't take with the bishop and takes with the pawn, uh, it doesn't change much. Uh, the situation is pretty much bad for him. Now, queen to uh, e3 is going, and this pawn can't be defended. Uh, of course, and I can probably take on the knight as well if required. Knight is taking on the uh, g5 as well. The second rook is also coming on the g5. So the attack is on. Uh, here he takes with the bishop. And that gives me a free pawn, uh, which is e6. So I take. That comes with a check as well. He has to move the king or get some peace in between. He chose to get back the bishop here. And I got back the queen on f5. The idea is simple. Uh, now I am eyeing the h7 with a couple of pieces already. So he has to defend it. He plays h5, um, h6 here. Um, that's one way to defend. But now the bishop can also come in, uh, which I, I I don't remember why I didn't play bishop there. But I took on the pawn uh, with the rook. Always a, a good move. You are creating some weakness on the opponent side, which he has to take with the dark square bishop now. And I played rook to h1 here. As you can see, the game completely changed. It's a blunder uh, because computer is suggesting that now you should get your bishop to c2. And now that if, if the bishop comes to c2, uh, if you see, it is a very deadly attack on the h7 and will be very tough to play. Computer is suggesting go to king, take king to g7 because there are ways you can at least save your king but not the bishop, um, then he, he goes above, we take on the bishop, he can just slide back. Now, we can still take on another pawn if, if uh, at all is possible. Um, and he can just move the king away and forcing us to take. Or we can just maybe get the rook in between, he has to again move, or get some peace in between, and that doesn't help though. So yeah, he has to 
keep running away here and there. That's how the game could have went uh, ahead. But um, I chose on to get the rook then rather than I was trying to just make sure that he is not going anywhere, running away anywhere. So I got the rook on the edge file, threatening to take on the bishop. Now he plays king to g7, uh, defending the bishop, as well as if I get the bishop now uh, and try to attack him uh, from h7, he can of course have a reroute of his king on the opposite side of the board. So uh, here again, I stacked the rook for the bishop. Now going exchange down when I'm peace down already. And that is what computer suggesting that it's a brilliant move. Now the depth of the move is pretty much uh, because now after he takes, uh, I have got bishop again. The plan is same to attack on the h7, which of course he tries to defend with the uh, rook here. If you see, it's a draw situation here after I play bishop, but uh, it's draw if both the players play perfectly fine from here and find the best moves, which is not possible uh, at a human level when you're playing, especially when we are playing like 1600 versus 1700 rated players. I, I was 17 or 1700 odd at that point of time, if I remember correctly. Uh, so he played the rook here uh, on the h8, trying to defend uh, the h7 with the check. So I took on the bishop, which was hanging for free. Uh, and then he gets to ask me questions to exchange the queen because he's peace, he's exchange up. Uh, so I just give him a check from uh, f6 here. He gets his king above. There's no other option to save the check. If he gets the queen in, in between, that's a mate. The bishop is always eyeing the g6, if you noticed. So, of course, he has to move the king now. And, of course, this bishop is protecting on the h7 as well. So, only one square remaining for the king. That's how you try to build up uh, to a checkmate, making sure there are less spaces remaining for the king. And I pushed him to h5 now. And now bishop to d1. Now, the idea is a discovered check after I move the knight. He tries to get his rook on the f file, attacking my queen. And if you see, it's mate in four now. Uh, it was mate in five af after I moved the bishop. Oh, it was mate in seven, eight. Mate in eight from here. Oh, nice. So it was a mating sequence here, which of course I didn't know when I was playing the game. Uh, so yeah, pushing him everywhere possible. He gets the rook on the uh, f file, f8, attacking the queen. And I uh, took on the pawn, giving him a check. Of course, he can't take the knight now. Uh, because the knight is guarded with the queen uh, and he has to move the king and the uh, only square remaining is knight to uh, sorry king to h4 uh, it's a forced move as you can see here in the answer as well and i gave him another check from the knight uh, to f3 now the king is pretty much trapped here if you see only one square remaining which is uh, oh a couple of squares remaining yeah because i blocked the diagonal of the bishop as well so two squares were remaining. What I didn't find here, I didn't have to move. It's still mate in two. He moves. Uh, okay, the knight move was not the perfect one because again I gave him one more square there. I got to understand this mating pattern thereafter, and I just placed the knight to f3. He didn't want to repeat here because he was winning on time way ahead. That was like some. Uh, 10 15 seconds remaining to end the game from my side and because i was planning throughout the game what to do and he just had to respond to my attack so he didn't take much time there uh, so that was uh, another discovered check to him uh, making sure that there's only one square remaining and now knight comes to g2 that's checkmate so that was the best move again um, trying to find the mate and i did find out on time that was important if you see, it's a beautiful mate. Uh, the king is has nowhere to be uh, going. It's a mate with a knight, which is not very often. And the queen is hanging. If you see, the knight is also being attacked. So everything being attacked, but yet you made the opponent. And that all happened, if we go back, uh, that was just because of the brilliant move uh, in the between, which was taking on the bishop with the rook.
and that is what was the equalizer of the game that gave me some advantage in the later half of the game because then i had some follow up plans to checkmate my opponent from different uh, parts trying to create some weaknesses and then trap him eventually so i hope you like the video it was instructive i believe uh, do let me know, know your feedback share on this with your friend circle if you have played your brilliant move already then do show it to me and if you haven't i hope you play, play a, a very nice brilliant move very soon and then post a comment in the video below so that i also do check that out and learn from that all right thank you so much for your time if you haven't subscribed the channel yet please do i am putting in a lot of hard work making these videos on a daily basis i am not a full time chess player i am i am working with some organization already as a seo analyst so i do a lot of stuff uh, on my regular life this is something which my passion is so help me follow my passion uh, follow and subscribe the channel press on the bell icon and stay tuned thank you so much for your time take care bye bye